This Real Agriculture podcast is brought to you by Genesis Fertilizers. Nitrogen fertilizer is your farm's number one expense. Farmers are working together through Genesis Fertilizers to solve the problem of high prices and security of supply by planning a state-of-the-art nitrogen plant. Security and earnings through ownership is the solution. Visit Genesis today at genesisfertilizers.com to learn more. Okay, we're talking to Peter Wee, Pete Johnson here on Agronomic Monday. And uh, Pete, uh, listener in... Get ready for it. Argentina. Yes, this, this show does go far and wide. Diego from Argentina was asking about the Yen project and some of the results. And he asked you for the top five things for wheat when it comes to uh, driving yield. What, what, what did you come up with? So, you know, Sean, like, I love projects like the Yen. And there's so much cool new information coming out. And so when you when when you're ever you're challenged with the top five things, I'm not sure I can limit it to five, but it's pretty clear from the yen. And this is not rocket science, by the way. Okay, like I could have predicted this without a yen. It's basic crop physiology. But if you want big wheat crops, you have to have big biomass. And the reason that works is, as we I think we've talked about this before, uh, is that the grain is only a proportion of the total crop. And it's called, the amount of grain to the total biomass is called the harvest index. And we don't change harvest index a whole lot. Uh, with winter wheat here in Ontario, you know, often 55% grain to 45% stover in that range. It, it, in some studies, it's as low as maybe 50%. It sometimes gets up 57, 58%, but, but that number doesn't change much. So you have to back up and say, okay, how do I get big biomass? Out of the yen, one of the really key things is heads per meter squared. And so you you have to get more heads per meter squared. And you would think, well, that's a seeding rate issue. But it actually flips the other way. And it's actually that you have to back up and say, okay, so how do we get more heads per meter squared? we seed in the optimum window so that we get fall tillers. And in fact, we seed at the early end of the optimum window and we reduce our seeding rate. And and that really is counterintuitive, but it's clear in the data that, that even if we push seeding rates to twice what, you know, early seeding rate at a million seeds per acre, we go to 2.5 million seeds per acre late, we can't make up that yield difference from that, that early seeding. So seeding at the right time, and for winter wheat in Ontario, it's actually a lower seeding rate on the early end of the window that, that really drives yield. One of the other, other trends that kind of surprises me is a lot of the repeating winners, a lot of the, the growers that are, are doing really well are doing it with narrow row wheat. So, I mean, compared to Western Canada that are on 10-inch row wheat or 12-inch row wheat, here in Ontario, we're all on seven and a half. So it's just the common no-till setup. And, of course, everybody in Western Canada is saying, well, that's already way too narrow. We are not going there. But in actual fact, our five-inch wheat growers look like they're, they're winning. And we even had a broadcast. Mark Davis from uh, Napanee, uh, right along Lake Ontario, and his broadcast wheat into soybeans, I think, was uh, gold, I think, perhaps, in terms of percent of yield potential. I think he got 117% of his yield potential with broadcast wheat. And so you say, how can that be that we need lower seeding rates, narrow rows, even maybe broadcast? And, you know, there's some German research that says if the seed are not at least one centimeter apart. For the, for the U.S. folks listening, that's half an inch. If you have two seeds that touch each other, they will compete with each other and, and you will lose yield on both of those plants. If you can get those seeds one centimeter or half an inch apart, you, they don't compete with each other. And then five inch wheat seeded early at low seed populations so that those seeds aren't, aren't within a one centimeter maybe that's where some of that wheat yield is actually coming from. 
Anyway, those are the fine tuning details that I think are so cool out of the Yen project. At the end of the day, the top five things, it really does come down to seed at the correct time in Western Canada. In my opinion, you know, Brian Barris's work on spring wheat, that's when, the, when soil temperatures go above zero. Brian would say two Celsius. I, I'm going to even push it a little earlier to get that, that wheat in the ground. Once it's, up, once it's above zero, give her, just give her. So seed at the right time. Uh, phosphorus, phosphorus, phosphorus is a starter fertilizer. It, like that's always a big deal, both in spring and winter wheat at seeding makes a huge difference. Uh, you, you absolutely want to make sure you keep that seeding rate right. And, and that depends on many factors, but the right seeding rate, it, it counts. For spring wheat, weed control is a big deal. For winter wheat, it's more managing the canopy with nitrogen applications. And then of course, controlling disease. So those are sort of the five things that I think really, really drive it. Stay green, that's the other thing I didn't mention. Stay green through uh, grain fill has, has really shown us that we can make added test weight. In the yen data, the high yield growers had uh, two grams more per thousand kernels. And you say, well, that's not that big a difference. It actually works out to about a 5% difference in yield when we can just have that, that little bit heavier kernel in there. So that stay green through, through grain fill makes a huge difference as well. So you, you made six. Stay green's the sixth. Okay, well, uh, I don't know. Pull out whichever one you want. I said <laughs> I would have trouble doing it in five. <laughs> I like that.